So let's take a look at airbrushes now. I have quite a few. I actually have more than this, but I couldn't find them. Uh, but this is a good selection here. We have two Badger airbrushes, one a basic one, one a higher end model, and we have the Iwata. Let's start with the Iwata because that's the one I'm most familiar with. This is the Iwata Eclipse HPCS, and this is my favorite airbrush. Uh, probably, this is the first airbrush I bought, uh, not including an uh, tester's Aztec, which isn't really an airbrush. Uh, I'll go into that in a minute, but uh, chrome finish, very nice, easy to disassemble and take apart and clean and go goes back together. I've used this for about four plus years and it's essentially as good as new. It's a, a little dinged up, but it works perfectly fine. Um, airbrush, you have a, and, uh, you have the little trigger here, which is you want a dual action. Dual action means that you press it down to control the airflow and then you pull it back to control the paint. Uh, a single action, you just pull back and it does the air and the paint at the same time, uh, which is extremely basic, but you'll quickly realize there are times where you want to control how the flow of one or the other goes. But um, that's the essentially difference between a single action and a dual action. Uh, nice large cup. Uh, they do make ones with smaller cups and just comes apart easy here. I hope it comes apart easy. I shouldn't be doing this with the needle inside. But there we have the needle. Uh, that's the thing you want to keep nice and straight. Uh, the one thing that's going to ruin your airbrush is if you nick your needle, if you bang it against something, well, you're probably going to need a new needle. You may be able to sand it down, um, however, not necessarily. But needle comes out the back, and mine's a little dirty at the moment, but you'll be cleaning this off a lot and taking this whole thing apart to uh, clean it up. The feature I like best in the Iwata, please come out. Okay, that's not going to come out right now. And I can't force it. Nope, it doesn't want to come out. But the tip of the airbrush itself is right in there, that inner circle and coming out here. It is a very large tip and it's, uh, well, you'll see the difference when I get to the badgers here, but it's something that's not going to uh, get lost or accidentally flush down a drain, unlike the badger airbrushes. Let's put this off to the side. Now I have two batchers here. Uh, this one is sort of an entry level one. I'm not sure about the cost. I'm not sure about the cost of either one of these because uh, Badger is very generous and uh, I didn't pay for either one of these. Um, I think this one's about $40, $50. This, the Renegade series, again, is the higher end one, costs about $100 or so, maybe $80. Uh, I think closer to 80 for this one. But start with the Renegade. We got black chrome on this one. Uh, features are pretty much the exact same as the Iwata. Virtually all airbrushes are the same uh, basic features. But uh, this comes apart again. Release the needle. And I haven't used this one in a while, so it's a bit stiff. But again, needle. The Iwata I have there is a 0.35 millimeter. I I think this is a five. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I gotta take this apart and oil it. Put that back together. And this has a feature that the Iwata does not, but a lot of airbrushes do. This has a little, little screw at the end. What this does is controls how far back you can pull the, the uh, trigger. So that controls how much paint will come out. So um, if you're trying to do very small amounts of paints, basically this acts as a brake, so you can't pull the trigger all the way back. If we loosen that up, you can see, there we go. It'll come back all the way back now. The inner workings here. I hope I can get this one apart. 
Now, I mentioned the tip on the Iwata. I'll compare the two for you. So one thing I don't like about the Badger airbrushes, this tiny little tip is where the needle goes through and you can imagine how easily it would be, would be to get this thing lost. Uh, as compared to the tip on the Iwata that has that whole section attached to it, so it's about a half inch long compared to this little tiny thing that you can sneeze and lose. So that's one of the reasons why I like the Iwata a bit better. <laughs> trying to get this back in is going to suck. I'm going to do that later. Um, the other feature about this particular Renegade series that I don't like is the forked uh, end on the airbrush. I'm not sure exactly why it's there. With the Iwata, it has a solid piece, which is good because when you go to clean it, what you can do is fill up the cup here with water or your solvent and just put your finger over here and let some air through and it will force uh, the paint and muck and whatever you have in here back into the cup and you could dump it out. Um, because the Badger has this little fork thing, you can't put your finger over it or even uh, you can use a towel, but it's kind of hard to get a good seal to get that to wash back. So the Iwata is a little bit easier to clean. Um, other than that, it's a fine airbrush it's just the Iwata has some features that I appreciate on them. Oh god, I'm trying to get the stamp thing together. Okay. So that's the Renegade. Now we have the other badger here. This one I admit I actually have not used because I got other airbrushes. So this is a funky little one. And this is one of their cheaper brands. And this one comes with bottles. Uh, this one does have a flat and so not all the Badger airbrushes have that. So this would be a bit easier to clean. It has a smaller cup, uh, does not have the locking feature in the rear. Other than that, it's virtually the same. The big difference on this Badger is this rotates. And if you're looking for airbrushes, you may notice some have a cup on top and then others have a bottle on the bottom. So you have gravity feed if it has a cup on top and you have siphon feed if it's on the bottom. Uh, gravity feed is better because for a siphon feed, uh, the air has to suck the paint out of this bottle and it takes a lot of air pressure to do that. Gravity feed, it takes much less pressure and so you can um, paint at a lower pressure which is usually good for doing fine work. So yes, uh, blowing is better than sucking go ahead and insert your joke there but there you have it um, now if you ask for a recommendation for an airbrush brush 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 i don't recommend you get either one of these for your first airbrush what i do recommend is you go onto ebay and you search for master airbrush and you buy the cheapest one you can find. It'll cost you about $20 shipped to you. And master airbrushes are, and I just poked myself on the tip of that needle, master airbrushes are extremely cheap. I had one and it lasted about three months before I broke it. The reason why I recommend those is if you're just starting out, first of all, it's a very inexpensive uh, purchase. Again, $20 compared to 50 or 60 or 120 how much how much ever I spent on this one so it's only $20 and also after using it for a while and deciding you still want to learn more about airbrushing and get better at it you can upgrade to a more expensive airbrush and you will notice the difference it's kind of like if you first learn how to drive a car and you're driving a Mercedes any other car you drive after that is going to suck so it's better off to start driving a clunker and then you learn to appreciate better cars once you buy more buy more expensive cars so go on ebay search for a master airbrush get one of those probably won't last you long um, may last you longer than it did me but uh, there you go uh, last thing i will mention is on um, testers has their own line of airbrushes called the aztec line uh, i've had one of those 
those are airbrushes, but not in the same sense as these. Those airbrushes have different tips that you can pull out and screw on another one and then have different um, diameters for spraying fine or thick. Uh, I really don't recommend those only because they're not they don't operate the exact same way and they're not the same build as a regular airbrush. If you learn on an Aztec and then buy another airbrush, a regular standard type of airbrush, you basically have to relearn how to use it because these don't have tips that you can easily replace and switch out. So um, that's the only reason I would stay away from the testers Aztec line. Again, go on eBay, get yourself a master airbrush, the cheapest you could find essentially, um, again around $20 or so. But hopefully that gets you started. Uh, there's airbrushes for you and the other video we talked about air compressors. So um, it's I know it's an expense, it's a large expense, but it's definitely worth it. Um, the things that you can do in air with an airbrush, uh, it's, it's, it's more important if you're building models than if you're painting miniatures, but even painting miniatures, it is, uh, I find it very helpful. Uh, especially if you're painting a lot of tanks and stuff like that or larger creatures. But uh, there you go. I hope this helps out any uh, newbies looking to buy airbrushes and or compressors. And um, good luck and happy painting.